Hey everyone, it's Mike from the Companion Development Team, here to show you how easy it is to run a Monte Carlo simulation in Companion. To get started, we'll add the Monte Carlo simulation tool to the roadmap and label it. We'll use this simulation to determine the force generated by a spring in an assembly. First, we'll enter an input, choose a distribution, and enter parameter values. Then we'll add more inputs. Because we're modeling a dimensional stackup that determines the compressed length of a spring, we'll enter a response labeled spring gap. Use the equation editor to enter it manually. If you have specification limits, you can enter them here. If not, you can add them later. As you add inputs and specify output equations, you'll see representations of each model here. A quick glance lets you know if you set up your simulation correctly. That's helpful when working with multiple or complex models. When setting up your models, sometimes it's easier to separate functions into groups, especially if you have multiple equations. The function we already set up represents the assembly that holds the spring. Let's create a group called assembly by clicking Create Group. After you create a group, you can view just the inputs and outputs of your model, or you can view it as the function. Next, let's create a group called spring and enter inputs for free length and spring rate. If you're not sure of an input's distribution, Companion can help you. Choose Use Data to Decide, and then open the CSV file that contains spring rate data from a sample of springs measured in the lab. Select the column you want to analyze and click Recommend Distribution. While many distribution fit options are possible, Companion shows up to three, with the largest one being the best fit. When you accept a distribution, Companion enters estimated parameters. Now, let's add a response for spring force, which is the spring constant multiplied by the deflection of the spring in the final assembly. Clicking All Groups lets you see how the inputs and outputs from different groups relate to each other. Again, you can choose between two views of your model. Click the tabs to view the individual groups. Let's click Simulate now to perform the simulation. Results of the initial simulation appear, with additional details available when you expand the More Results section. Click the tabs to see individual models. Click all groups to see the results from every model in one place. Based on your results, Companion recommends an appropriate follow-up action in the Next Steps section. If you perform the simulation without specification limits, Companion will suggest you add them as a next step. If you included specification limits and process capability is below accepted levels, Companion suggests proceeding with parameter optimization. If capability is above 1.67, Companion suggests a sensitivity analysis. If you want to change assumptions or if you made an error, just click Edit Model and rerun the analysis. Context sensitive help is available if you need additional guidance for the best course of action. Now let's look at how Companion handles parameter optimization. Parameter optimization identifies settings for the controllable inputs that can improve your process, depending on your goal. First, define your goal, such as to target a particular mean value, to minimize percent out of spec, or DPMO, or to maximize CPK. Then, define the search range. Based on your process, Specify settings for an input parameter, 
so Companion won't suggest settings that you can't achieve. For example, you might not be able to set an oven's thermostat below 100 degrees or above 500 degrees. Check noise if an input is out of your control, for example, outdoor temperature. After entering all of the inputs, click Optimize Parameters. Companion identifies optimized input settings and shows you the improvement you can expect to see if you use them. After you perform a parameter optimization, Companion adds the results to the roadmap. Next, we'll take a look at Companion's sensitivity analysis. A sensitivity analysis shows the effect of changing input variation on your response. It can help you decide when it's worth the time and money to reduce the variability of an input and when it isn't. This graph shows the effect of changing the variation of a single input while holding the others constant, and then estimating the effect on the response y. The x-axis represents the percent of change in variation. The y-axis represents the standard deviation or the percent out of spec, if you have specification limits for the response. Each line represents an input. To view a single input, click here. For example, you can see that if you were able to reduce the standard deviation of this input, you would also substantially reduce the percent out of spec. By contrast, this input is essentially a flat line, indicating that changes in the variation of the input would have little effect on process capability, for better or for worse. Change any of the input settings you like and perform the simulation again with these new parameters. As with parameter optimization, sensitivity analysis shows you the improvement you can expect to see if you use the new settings, and it adds the results to the roadmap. You can export your simulation by right-clicking the simulation in the roadmap. To export the results and graphs, choose the PDF option. To export the simulated data, ensure that the results are showing in the workspace, and then choose the CSV file option. For more information and videos on Companion, go to www.minitab.com.